if you remember flying around the galaxy with your trusty droid, helping the Wookiees liberate Kashyyyk, and taking on Darth Vader, then you played Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Wait, or was it Jedi Fallen Order? Because on the surface there are a lot of similarities between these two games. Both are a third person action game, both are set in the same time frame, and both focus on a young man embracing the Jedi path and fighting the Empire. But how similar are they really? Well that's what this video is all about, we're going to compare the two games, look at the parallels and differences and try to figure out if one is distinctively better than the other. Alright let's start at the beginning, the first few levels in both games act as a tutorial and an introduction to both protagonists. And yes, both use their voice actors likenesses but that's where the parallels end at this point in the story. Galen Merrick starts the game a star killer, Vader's apprentice with a hypercharged set of force powers. He's sent on covert missions to hunt down the surviving Jedi. Now Cal Kestis starts the game as one of those surviving Jedi in hiding from the Inquisitors. I guess in a way Starkiller is a proto-Inquisitor and in some alternate canon you could easily see Starkiller hunting down Cal. Now both games tutorial levels do a great job setting up what kind of game you're in store for. Cal is climbing obstacles, jumping from ledges, squeezing through tight spaces and generally trying to get around as stuff breaks down around him. He feels like a tiny bug in this huge galaxy and this is accented through the game by juxtaposing Cal against giant structures, creatures and vehicles like this Star Destroyer. The Force Unleashed takes the complete opposite approach, setting the tutorial from Darth Vader's point of view while the Empire invades Kashyyyk. There's no hiding or crawling through vents here, Vader marches slowly wrecking everything in his path. It's also interesting that in the opening of Fallen Order everything around Cal is being dismantled. Meanwhile in the first proper level of the Force Unleashed, Starkiller finds himself in a factory where TIE fighters are being built. So we have both games presenting two sides of the same coin, dismantling of the old republic versus building of a new empire. And of course with both of these being Star Wars action games it's not long before the lightsabers come out. And both games treat lightsabers like glowing bats. Now the lightsaber combat itself is quite different, both games were clearly influenced by their popular contemporaries. The Force Unleashed leans on a lot of the hack and slash tropes from the mid 2000s made popular by games like Devil May Cry and God of War. Fallen Order on the other hand leans more on these souls like elements like parrying and timed striking. I can't say that one is better than the other, it's really down to your own personal preference. Both characters also start in very different places when it comes to force powers. Starkiller starts with his force powers already at a level that would put most Jedi Masters to shame and then he just continues to supercharge them to 11. And this does make sense, after all he is tasked with hunting down the remaining Jedi Masters. Cal Kestis on the other hand, well there's no other way to say it, he's got Force ED at the start. Now as the game progresses, Cal slowly regains his Force and combat abilities using the good old fashioned skill tree system. But they're a lot more subdued when compared to Starkillers, and this game tends to utilise them quite a lot to solve puzzles. The level design of both games also reflects both the character's power levels and gameplay style. This is evident from the start. Starkiller is running around the wide open TIE fighter factory taking on entire squadrons of soldiers, pulling TIE fighters out of midair and crushing ATSTs like cans, all the while engaging in the game's sandbox of destruction mechanic. Meanwhile Cal makes his way through narrow train compartments, taking on no more than a couple of stormtroopers at one time. Both games end their first levels with a lightsaber battle. Now in The Force Unleashed you're expected to to win it easily. In the Fallen Order there is no way to win. And funny enough both characters also end the level escaping to a ship, and while Starkiller confidently leaps off the falling platform Cal has to be rescued and even then he barely survives. Both characters have a wide variety of costumes to change into, but I think the Force Unleashed wins this one out for me, simply because you can change to a C-3PO skin and then commit droid on droid crime. And speaking of droids, both protagonists have one. Cal has the cute and friendly BD one who heals, slices machines and does mini games. He's the Pikachu to Cal's Ash, riding throughout the story on his shoulder. That's right, scan his ass, BD. Oh nice, a skill point. Starkiller's droid proxy is a lot less portable, he's very friendly but there is an ironic duality to the droid because his main programming is to kill Galen. He doesn't serve any real gameplay functions until that one time he turns into Darth Maul and tries to cut you down. So we've got one droid that heals you and the other one that tries to kill you. 
When it comes to gameplay design, The Force Unleashed took a pretty traditional action game approach. The campaign is divided into 10 standalone linear levels that you have to hack and slash through, set off some set pieces, and fight a boss. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Jedi Fallen Order has five main planets that you can fly between, however, you'll be revisiting them a bunch, for better or worse, each time exploring a new area using your newly acquired skills to unlock something. There's a much greater focus on exploration here, which can lead to a slower pace when compared to The Force Unleashed. When it comes to what genre both of the games fall into, The Force Unleashed is pretty easy to pin down. Jedi Fallen Order, on the other hand, is not. It's a typical example of a modern AAA game that feels like it needs to kind of be a little bit of everything. This is probably because games these days are so ridiculously expensive and take so long to develop that the publishers decide to hedge their bets and cast as wide a net as possible by throwing in as many features into the game as they can. We've got action, combat, RPG, dungeon exploration, platforming, puzzles, it's a bit of Uncharted, it's a bit of Dark Souls, it's a bit of Zelda, it even has a sprinkle of Pokemon thrown in with all the creatures you have to scan. And to be fair, this game juggles all of these elements really well, apart from two. Personally, I could have really done without these ancient dungeon puzzle levels. They always seem to take place between an important story point or a big set piece, and just kind of ended up breaking the pacing for me. And it almost feels like the game knows it as well, so it's kind of bargaining with you. Come on, just figure out this giant ball puzzle and then we'll do a really cool lightsaber fight, I promise. These sections also didn't really feel like Star Wars to me. It's strange because the developers went out of their way to make all the other environments really true to the series aesthetics, and then you just get these generic looking ancient dungeons. And then of course we have the backtracking, which also seemed to come at the worst moment possible. You'd be riding high after flying the big bird and defeating Bowser's wife, and then you've got to trek all the way back to the ship on foot. I don't know, it almost feels like a weird interlude between the story, which is a shame because Fallen Order does some really interesting things with its narrative. Now yes, the main plot is a bit basic. It's essentially a chase between Cal's crew and the Inquisitors to find Cordova's holocron containing the location of four sensitive younglings so they can start a new Jedi Order. I think knowing that canonically this can't really happen blunts the impact of the main plot and the developers seem to realize it too, which is why they focused more on the characters. We get to know Cal, see his past as a Padawan through flashbacks, watch him establish bonds with his new crew and overcome his fears. Fallen Order's more open, exploration-based gameplay also allows the player to experience the rich lore of this period in the Star Wars canon. When compared to Jedi Fallen Order, the Force Unleashed story is much grander in scope and a lot less subtle, sticking to George Lucas's classic trope of faster and more intense. Galen goes on one hell of a character arc, going from Vader's secret assassin tasked with killing the remaining Jedi to becoming a Jedi himself and triggering the whole rebellion against the Empire. And all in 10 action packs levels without a hint of backtracking in sight. Unfortunately, both games have to deal with the problem of being set smack in the middle of the timeline, which limits the retroactive impact they can have on established canon, but we'll get to that a little later on. But right now, I'd like to talk about Wookiees. Or more specifically, their homeworld. You see, Kashyyyk is the only planet to be featured in both games, so naturally it would be ripe for a comparison. The Force Unleashed has two Kashyyyk levels. We've already mentioned the one at the start. You play as Vader chucking Wookiees into the abyss and using Kamehameha on these giant doors. It's designed as a showcase of all the over-the-top things you can do in this game. The other Kashyyyk level takes place in the second half of the game. It's set at night and kind of acts as a sequel to the first level, showing the consequences of the Empire's occupation. The planet is a burning, dried up husk of its former self. This level is a great example of what The Force Unleashed is all about. It's more or less linear, featuring cameos and callbacks to the movies, and it's filled with over-the-top enemies like ATSTs with Gatling guns and flame troopers. And of course, where would we be without a good old-fashioned giant door that you can peel back like a yogurt lid? This level also has the famous room filled with trophies of all the Star Wars creatures, including Jar Jar and Carbonite. Plus, there is this Wookiee prisoner in the center, you can of course break the cage and free him. Come on buddy, you're free. Oh, he's a bit scared. Let me just give you a hand. Whoops. 
And like most Force Unleashed levels, this one also ends with an over-the-top set piece you've got to destroy. Fallen Order has you explore Kashyyyk several times, each time unlocking a new part of the planet. But Cal's first exposure to the Wookiee homeworld also happens to start with a battle. However, this time around, the perspective has been shifted. The camera sticks very close to Cal, making him seem tiny compared to Empire's oversized war machine. We continue to hold tight on Cal as he squeezes inside, commandeers the 8080, and then uses it to wreak havoc on the Empire. Now, if this was any other Star Wars game, the camera would switch to a third person view. But Fallen Order keeps it in the cockpit all staying with Cal. Now this level also has cameo from a movie character and you can also rescue Wookiee prisoners. Although I've got to say these Wookiees look rough. Look I know hair is really tough to do in games but did you have to make it look like they were made of confetti? Now Fallen Order's version of Kashyyyk is a prime example of everything that makes this game great. When the game is firing on all cylinders it's on. You've got wall climbing, free running, force using, saber swinging, puzzle solving, blaster bolt deflection, tree sliding, giant bird riding, and all of its book ended with a big boss fight. Great, what a fun part of the game. More of that, please. What? We've got a backtrack? Ah, oh, damn it. And finally, let's compare the endings of the two games, which also have several very interesting parallels. Both endings revolve around the protagonist venturing deep inside the enemy's base to rescue something or someone. In the Force Unleashed, Starkiller must infiltrate the Death Star and rescue the Senators, who will then go on to start the Rebel Alliance. In Fallen Order, Cal must infiltrate the... <clears throat> Fortress Inquisitorius, and take back the holocron containing the location of the Force-sensitive younglings. Once again, the premise is very similar, but the way both protagonists go about infiltrating these locations is different. Starkiller, well, he does what he does best, jumping straight into the action and uh, seemingly taking on the entirety of the Imperial forces stationed on the Death Star. Cal, on the other hand, uses stealth, infiltrating the fortress from the ocean and and reenacting the start of Metal Gear Solid 1. Now, the action does pick up as Cal navigates through the underwater corridors and engages in battle with what you think is the game's final boss. And then Darth Vader shows up. And this is where we get to both the biggest parallel and difference between these games. In The Force Unleashed, you use everything you've learned throughout the game to best Vader. And then some. This game is infamous for the world-class ass-kicking Vader gets. I mean, this bit alone where Star Starkiller slams him face first against the shield generator like a ragdoll is like something out of a Mortal Kombat fatality. Now, in the Fallen Order, you use everything you've learned throughout the game to just barely survive. This isn't so much a boss battle as it's an escape sequence. Vader is menacing, relentless, and terrifying. They've really nailed down his proportions too, and the camera angles used in the sequence always make him look huge. And to be perfectly honest, this portrayal is a lot more faithful to the sinister Vader from the movies than what we get in The Force Unleashed. But I still can't definitively say that one is better than the other, they're just really different. If this Vader battle is a shonen anime, then this one is a horror movie. It just depends on your taste. And so we come to the end of the story, and as mentioned earlier, both of these games have to deal with being wedged right in between two trilogies, dealing with themes and story threads that we already know get resolved by different characters at a different time. We know that Starkiller can't kill Vader, unless you uh, play the DLC, and we know that Cal can't rebuild the Jedi Order. But at the same time, these stories have to have some kind of consequence, there has to be some kind of payoff, and uh, both of the games do try to achieve that, but I think Force Unleashed does a slightly better job overall by setting up Starkiller as the spark of the rebellion, even if it does play a little loose with the canon. Fallen Order ends with Cal deciding to break the whole Holocron with the younglings location, stating that their destiny should be trusted to the Force. Which to me feels kind of like it's leaning a little too much on the Holocron is the friends we made along the way trope. Again, I understand the storytellers did have their hands tied with this game, so I think we should give them a bit of leeway that and the sequel is coming soon, so I'm going to wait for that to reserve judgement. And so there we have it, The Force Unleashed and Jedi Fallen Order. At the end of the day there are many parallels between the two games, however it's clear that each of the games has carved out its own 
identity. Yes, both games came out a decade apart and were very much inspired by both the video game trends of the time and the state of the Star Wars canon. Now, when it comes to picking one over the other, it really depends what you're in the mood for. Do you want your Star Wars presented in an over-the-top superhero shonen style action game? Or would you rather take your time, explore some beautiful environments with a more grounded story and a mix of various gameplay elements? Where the over-the-top set pieces are still there, but used a lot more sparingly. But that's just my take. What do you think about the parallels and differences between these two games? Do you prefer one over the other? If so, let me know why in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and follow me on Twitter. See you next time.